A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Verily, all praises due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid, and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves and from the evils of our own actions. And whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can guide back to the correct path. I shed one la ilaha illallah wa shed the Muhammadin Abduhu Rasuluhu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We testify there is no deity worthy of our worship except for Allah, who is alone with no partnership. There never has and never will be another. And we bear witness that Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, is the last and the final prophet of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My brothers and sisters, friends and family, and everybody tuning in to the live stream. Thank you for joining again for a wonderful Friday reminder today the 13th of Rajib of 1444 after Hijra, or also known as February the 3rd of 2023 of the Common Era. My name is Brother Daniel from the Northeast, Northeast Chapter of Embrace. And for today's Friday reminder, I want to address uh, the upcoming popularized holiday of Valentine's Day um, and somewhat of its interactions with romance and Islam. So Valentine's Day, for a little bit of history, is also called St. Valentine's Day, or the Feast of St. Valentine, which is celebrated annually on February the 14th, and has been said to have originated as a Christian feast, honoring one or two early Christian martyrs named St. Valentine, who were then later in time recognized by the Anglican, the Lutheran, and the traditional Catholic Christian faiths. And this holiday now is usually celebrated in the United States as well as in Britain or the UK, Canada, and Australia, and is also celebrated in other countries such as Argentina, France, Mexico, and South Korea. But if we want to dig into the history regarding this holiday, uh, it has been mentioned that uh, there is historical evidences that point that February the 15th, or the times between the 13th, 14th, and 15th, was the day of before the time of the conversion from paganism into uh, Christianity during the time of the Romans, that they had a celebration known as the Lupercalia, which was a festival which celebrated the coming of the spring, which included certain fertility rites, a lot of which I cannot mention here on this platform, but it ended with the pairing of women with men by a lottery, very similar to today's Valentine's Day cards, where the young men drew the names of women from a jar, and the couple would then be coupled up for the duration of that festival or longer if the match was right. However, later, the traditions and the folk traditions have sparked into this uh, modern day fiasco, or what is now referred to as a Hallmark holiday, or a holiday that is perceived to exist primarily for its commercial purposes, rather than to commemorate a tradition or historically significant event, and has thus become now the pinnacle and a significant uh, example of religious, commercial, and cultural celebration of romance and love. And as Muslims, we come to a point where, uh, as I've come to understand, uh, that is not something for me in particular that I participate in, but there are understandings by modern scholars who are of a different understanding, um, and I am not of that knowledge to debate or discuss or argue with them. But regardless of what point that we come to, it is a reality of something that we are interacting with and it is something that uh, we in one way or another will have to face especially those who have children here in the united states as i'm experiencing uh, my oldest is currently in kindergarten and they are starting off with this holiday and these gift exchanges and such but the portion really here is not to reflect on the holiday itself but generally the meaning or the reason behind it because the reveling topic of romance and good treatment of spouses or the intimacy uh, or pursuit of such or of sex and wooing uh, is really the emphasis of the holiday of Valentine's Day. So how do we as Muslims take from this time and then are able to you know, get the best uh, of 
understanding from it. Um, but the reality, too, is that um, around us, because it is surrounding us in every way, shape, and form, the Muslim sisters and even the men are not blind to the happenings of this holiday. They are witnessing uh, plenty of uh, fashion or gift arrangements, flowers, candies and chocolates or nice jewelry on sale or other sorts of discounted deals, vacation spots or romantic getaways, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, even at my local pizzeria nearby where I live, they are selling heart-shaped pizzas. Um, but regardless of how we interact with it, what can we do, my brothers and sisters? And in essence, I think that this is a good time for us to reflect that romance inside of Islam is absolutely not discouraged. And we can take this opportunity of witnessing this around us uh, to see what we can do more for our spouses. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had mentioned saying that the believers who show the most perfect faith are those who have the best behavior and the best of you are those who are the best to their wives. So are we then to say or uh, to make the argument that this is not something we participate in. And absolutely, that's not the case, because the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam has many examples of how he used to treat his wives in a romantic sort of fashion. And we can look at ourselves and ask, when was the last time that we did something for them, for the wife, for the husband, or the husband, for the wife? Because even the Prophet Wasallam, his actions, uh, for an example, he used to feed Aisha, radiallahu anha, with his own hands to express his love towards her. But... Does that also mean, and can we also share that, you know, can we not cook food for uh, for our spouses? Can we get what they want without them having to ask? Can we surprise them with random gifts? Perfect example, when was the last time, you know, the husband ran out and grabbed flowers? Inshallah, I hope he's a good husband and he does it uh, often. Uh, but then again, that's somewhat of a cultural thing, uh, depending on where you um where you may come from, but Abu Huraira, Randilahu Anhu, had reported saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had said, give each other gifts and you will love each other. And recall too, my brothers, that all that is spent on by a man, on his wife, his parents, and children is a form of charity, which shall then be rewarded by Allah SWT. And in the same sense, are we looking you know, if, if there's ever the, the idea that maybe the, the passion has fizzled out a little bit, you know, are we taking care of ourselves and adorning ourselves for our partner so that they can find us attractive or want to find us in that sort of fashion? Ibn Abbas, Ranilahu Anhu, had said that as my wife adorn, I'm sorry, adorns herself for me, I adorn myself for her. So the practice of even the Sahaba in regards for his their understanding with their interaction with the Prophet Sallallahu is that they should dress not only just modestly, but also in a way that attracts the opposite sex. And the wife should wear the clothes which pleases her husband. Likewise, the husband should do the same of what the wife likes. And every time that the husband and the wife glance at one another, the glance should arouse them and stir up more love for the spouse. And this is a means to ignite the love inside of the heart. And the same question or on the same topic, did you kiss your spouse like you meant it today? Because the Prophet Sallallahu would kiss his wives regularly, even when he would be fasting. So there's no excuse that we should be so uh, be distant or not give them some sort of physical attention. Did we forget to tell our spouse how amazing they are, how great of a mother or a father they are, how good they are at supporting the family? Did we flirt or flatter them to the point that they feel attractive. The Prophet Sallallahu used to call his wife Humaira, which means the little reddish one, which refers to someone who is so fair that due to the sun, they would get a reddish tan. And this was a word out of love. So we should call our spouses by sweet names. We should show part our partner love and affection in every little thing. Even as we know, uh, there is 
you know, the five languages of love. So maybe it's not by words or it's not by gifts. Maybe it's by actions or just quality time that we share with them. That is a means for us to grow closer to them. Because the Prophet Sallallahu also did this too by cleaning and helping out at the home. He would see to his own needs rather than demanding his wife to do things. And he would clean and he would see to his own clothing and he would even cobble his own shoes. And one needs to feed this love constantly in the household to keep that flame burning as well. And in that same case, did we reciprocate that love and attraction with words and touch as well? Because the Prophet Sallallahu he used to stare into the eyes of his wife and then said to Aisha, anha, in praise of her beauty, how white are your eyes? So he would, it was definitely a, a means of, you know attracting the uh, the attraction of his uh, of his spouses and intimacy itself isn't always a two-way street it may not always be so uh so cut and dry but it is a road worth traveling and the view and the journey is most certainly worth the extra distance made and again the sharia promotes this romance this connection these physical relationships that we have between the husband and the wife between spouses and the prophet sallallahu even stated that conjugal relations, intimacy, and sex with the wife or with the partner is a sadaqah. So nonetheless, if it uh, turns out to get to that point, we're all getting good deeds nonetheless. So I'm not saying for this Valentine's Day that we need to be coarse or we need to be cold or completely ignored in that sort of sense, that we don't participate in it whatsoever. However, this is a good time for us to increase ourselves for our loves of our spouses, to be the best husbands that we can possibly be, and for the wives to be the best wives that they can possibly be, to the point where we would be able to have non-Muslims look at the relations that are between two spouses inside of Islam and say, mashallah, <laughs> or let's hope they say, mashallah, uh, it's like Valentine's Day every day for them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Allahumma subhanahu wa bihamdi, ashadu wa la ilaha ila anta subhanahu wa ta'ala tu wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.